hi hi all uh, in the previous session we have discussed about what is react js how we use react what are the uses of react js what are the features of react js how it's going to be trend trending in the next years and what is virtual dom the core feature of react js and how to create a project uh, I, I mean with no Con zero configurations like uh, react create react app with the help of create react app cli we have created this project now uh, this node modules uh, let's discuss about uh, each step by step the folder structure of this project so from here we'll be continuing what's the folder structures and we'll be explaining each folder purpose like that so whenever we have implemented the project create react app it will be by default it will be providing the node modules so all these node modules are the dependencies for our react js application so our react js application will work only if it has all the dependencies needed so for any of the project as i said earlier and now i am saying also i'm repeating the same important point for any of the ui development project whether it is an react js whether it is an angular js the main important file is package json so once i'm opening it so let's uh, let's understand what exactly here we have so the main part of this package json is scripts we'll be running each script like npm start what does this start do initially i will take a terminal here and i will be running this like i'm running npm start now if you see the first line of this command it will be executing react scripts start you mean this one it will execute react scripts start so this is the main command will be executing so thereafter it runs the developer development server here as we have discussed and uh, here we have zero configuration it means react create app will be providing the development server and to deploy our application also it will provide babel to transpile our es6 code into plain javascript code so there are many inbuilt features will be provided with this build workflow so we need to follow and we need to create react app boilerplate for the beginners to learn and explore so now see uh, as on when i have run npm run st npm start it was executed this command and now we are could able to run open our application in localhost 3000 let's open and see what here see we have this one automatically it was opened into the default browser and we can see react application here so also we have edited app.js file and we wrote a sample dev and it was live reload hot live reload it means whatever the changes we have done in our application it will be reflected automatically in the browser this happens because it was the configuration build flow was in that way like each and every file will be watching uh, the application workflow will be like a watcher will be there any of the file changes it will reload that file in the browser so that whatever we change here as on when we save here in the ide visual studios it will be reflected back in the browser so no need to refresh browser so this is called as a live reload so next next we have a couple of commands like npm build let's see what this npm build is going to do for us so i'm going to run npm build so this npm build sorry we need to run npm run build so let's see here you there will be one folder will be added see we could able to see build folder added newly as on when we run this npm run build command if you observe the console also it's showing something like 
it is optimize optimizing the build for the production release so now if you observe it has been optimized all these files and it has given us now let's open the build in the build folder we have a couple of files so we need to copy all these files and you go and keep these files in your web server like we can keep this in the tomcat web apps folder as as it is if we copy paste as it is the deployment will be done the command here to make this optimize is npm run build so it will optimize all our files into singular files and it uh, gives us a bundle file like this we'll have all the resources everything under this so just we need to copy this and we need to paste in our web server so th that's all about this npm build and coming to npm test npm run test what does this test do this test is is all about running our unit test cases it will run our unit test cases and it will uh, as on when uh, in one of the tab we need to run this npm run tests so as on when we uh, modify the code the test will fail so in parallel we can develop the code and we can fix the unit test cases so if i run npm run tests it will pick the test i mean uh, the suffix of the app name the file name the suffix of the file name it will be picking and it will run and it will execute it will show us what all the test cases we wrote and how many test cases are passed and how many are failed so these are the things it will be giving overall so coming to npm run test it will give a unit test cases will be running here all the unit tests goes cases will go in app.test.js here we need to write a couple of unit test cases like as on when the code increases this unit test cases also increases so coming to the next command eject npm eject we need we should not run this command as as it is very uh, one time effort like uh, it will not revert back we can't revert it back once if if we run npm run eject all the default configurations which create react app is giving us will be destroyed it will be gone everything we need to configure from the beginning so this command we need to use very carefully and only people who have confidence or enough advanced knowledge in configuring all the webpack babel and live reload everything or who has all the knowledge in configuring everything should use this and they also should use this when they are not satisfied with the default configuration given by the reactjs then only they need to use this command so for now please don't do this at the initial stages of development so coming to this yes lint configuration so this is like uh, uh, as on when we write the code it will be giving us some lint issues like uh, the variable which is de indefined it is not using the a variable was declared but it is not using so the react application as on when we write the code by default it runs and it will give the lint issues lint issues are nothing but it will uh, see what the code optimization and whether the variables are used or not like there are some set of rules will be defined in this es lint configurations based on that rules the lint lint issues will be given in this terminal so coming to this browsers list this browser list we are providing here just to say uh, the development see uh, last one chrome version it means we are targeting browsers list here this is more uh, uh, i mean this is more required for the developing um, browser target will i mean this this session explains about which browser and which version we are targeting at the time of the development of this application so coming to the dependencies dependencies we have dependencies and dev dependencies in any of the package json file will be having dependencies and dev dependencies let's understand the differences between these dependencies and dev dependencies for any of the project uh, what are the core libraries needed to run this project in order to run this project what are the core core libraries needed those are called as those comes under this dependencies folder and those 
libraries which are needed for uh, unit testing and BDDs, linting issues. These all comes under dev dependencies because this doesn't stop our development effort. Whereas this core library source are needed to deploy our application and to run our application. So the core libraries comes under the dependency part and the development libraries comes under dev dependencies. So that was the difference between the dependencies and the dev dependencies. So coming to the symbols here, for any of the library we import in the dependencies, there will be some cap symbol, tilde operator. Let's understand what exactly this means. We call this as a semantic versioning. So here we have three things like, uh, let's copy this, yeah. Let's copy this and uh, we'll paste here. Now there will be like major dot minor dot patch or a bug. So if you observe here, we have 16.13.1. Uh, let, let's understand the 16 means it's a major version, 13 is a minor version, and one is a patch. So for every any library there will be three things like this all together it is called as a thematic versioning so 16 is a major version 13 is a minor in in this major we have 13 as a minor and in that this 13 minor we have one as a patch or but so what what this symbols explains exactly like cap and tilde sometimes you might be seeing a tilde operator like this before the version we mentioned so let's understand what this uh, symbols. This symbols has a specific uh, meaning. Any of the library which was being prefixed with the cap, it means just modify the minor and the patch version. If any of the latest version of the React library comes into the market, any of the React latest version comes into the market, if it sees the cap, then we are asking our package JSON only to upgrade 13.1 and it will not touch the major version. We're not going to change the major version of the library. Just we are modifying the minor and the patch version. So that's the, that's the meaning of this cap symbol. If we change the cap to tilde operator, it means only change the patch or the bug version of this library. Don't touch the minor and major versions. It will only update the patch or bug. So this is the reason when we do npm install, it will check in the npm repository and it will check what all the uh, major versions and minor versions updated and it will update accordingly. So this is something related to the semantic versioning. So this is the main concept. We need to understand like uh, what what this special symbols are meant. So if we wanted to stick for only uh, I need this only this version. I don't want to update to the versions of this library. Uh, for every six months, three months, or for a, any of the bug fixes, these libraries will be updated. And updated libraries will be posted or published to the npm repository. From there we can get these libraries. So that was the main purpose here. So if you want to stick only for one version, don't keep any of the symbols. So it will take the exact version. So that's all about a short about the semantic versioning, which helps us a lot in understanding these symbols. So I think we have covered most of the part in the packages. Let's now move to the code. Yeah, this is the app.js. Uh, this is the main function here. So let's understand what happens here. We have public folder here. This public folder is all about, we'll be storing our assets, images, fonts, everything in this public folder. So this is the only index HTML file we see. Entire the application, this is the only index file, index HTML file we see. So let's examine what ha what's there in this index HTML file. So if you see, we have nothing in the body, just a div with ID root and no scripts would been added in the body. 
our build workflow will be automatically adding the scripts at the end of this so let's check in the browser what happens exactly i'm opening right click inspect i'm opening the developer tools let's examine what exactly here we have so this is the index.html we are loading so if you observe in the body we have not mentioned anything but there are few script files are added automatically this is taken care by our build workflow if you see we are not adding any of the scripts in the code by the time we run this application our build workflow will inject all these scripts and it will keep bottom to the body so also if you observe we have only root component given here there is no children in inside of this root but we have app component div inside the root component how this is happening so let me explain this so in the index.html uh, there would be nothing important to discuss but there will be only one div one div this will make everything a magical representation of this react so we'll take one div with an id root and all the components will come under this root folder so let's check how it is happening so this is the first file it will be loading and next file is index.js we need to go back to the index.js so if you key observe here we have a react dom which is trying to render the main app this is the app component we are rendering this app component in document.get element by id it means we are rendering the app component in this div element so this is the main core part we need to understand so here we can keep uh, i mean as as we have uh, aware of that react is a component based so everything in the application is divided into smaller pieces of application and all these smaller pieces of application will go under this app component i mean in the app.js all what all the applications we have i mean what all the components in an application all resides in this one component and we call this as a root component and we refer this root component under this index.js file so here we are mentioning the root component here and we are trying to render this root component under this root document got get element by id i mean it will reside here so that's the reason we are pointing this app dot and where this app dot is coming app component is coming so as on when app component if i highlight it it is importing from app dot we're not extending this with dot js this is because our build workflow will extract uh, no need to define this as a javascript file the no it can understand it, it is a javascript file no need to give an extension like dot js it can understand it is a dot js file as we are importing it and we are using in the component level so come to the uh, coming to the this is the main uh, point where the index.html importance and from where uh, we are uh, injecting the component into this root id from this index index.js we are injecting our app component into the root component this is where we are injecting our app component into this root component so let's come here and uh, i will uh, remove all this code for simplicity yeah now let's check we have nothing here what all are right here sample testing so if i go to the browser it will be refreshed here see sample testing so this is called live reloading as on when i change in the application there will be watchers watching our application files any of the file changes it will be reloaded automatically so this is one thing so uh, if you understand we wrote react here so um, before that let me explain you what is what this is everyone will think that this is an html no we write this html in dot js file the special syntax of this is known as jsx it means javascript xml let me write here it is known as jsx 
JavaScript XML. What's the advantage of writing this JSX? The main advantage of using this JSX is Yeah, this is called as a JSX syntax. What this uh, syntax uh, especially doing is, it is it will create this dev HTML tags into React elements. The importance of this, why we are using, why we use this JSX syntax means, we this syntax will convert the HTML tags into react elements so this is what it, it's going to do the main purpose and main understanding of jx is it will convert the html tags into react elements so what internal this happens let's check it out internally this is equal to react dot create element so dev comma this is a class name of the css we are going to give and this is the element which we are using here so this was a simple one i wrote let's check what happens okay we should not give semicolon there okay so see we got sample testing the same output as we have got earlier so internally this is going to happen so this is the jsx syntax we use to convert the div elements html elements into the react elements so that's the definition of jsx so internally we wrote this code but internally it will be uh, compiled into this format so internally it will convert like this so this is the reason we are importing react here if we comment out this react this will not work earlier if you got any uh, doubt like this we are importing react and we are not using anywhere react here what's the reason in importing the react here so internally it will be converting this jsx syntax into like this so this is the reason we are importing react at the top so internally it will be uh, converted in this way like react dot create element dev is a parent element null is a class name and this is the element inside the div so for every each and every element in the div we need to write react dot create element react dot create element it would be a huge elements like this without jsx also we can write the react applications but it would be uh, more number of lines code and it, it causes much more confusion so instead of that we are using this jsx syntax so that's the reason of uh, importing react in the top to access it in the code so uh, this magic will be done by babel so let's see what babel will do when we write a common code uh, i have a link here i will show what babel is going to do when we write a common uh, react js code here how it is going to convert it uh, yeah see this is what we wrote here like hello world. internally what babel is going to do it it will be transpiling into like this it will transfer like this so see react create element div null Null is a class name as we are not using any class name here we have kept it as a null so coming to here hello world is the text inside this div so hello world can be anything it would be like a child components it can consist of another html tags as well so now what this jsx is doing the, the babel here the babel is doing it is converting our es6 jsx syntax into a plain javascript code it's trying to convert our code into plain javascript code where where it is creating the html elements into react elements the main purpose of this jsx is now we can understand it's it is converting the html tags into react elements this is the main purpose of jsx whereas babel 
it will convert entire code from this ea6 format into browser understandable code that's the main main usage of babel it will transpose the code from latest modern ea6 code into the browser plain javascript code that's the main purpose of this babel so that was a that was a about babel yeah coming to welcome application we'll create one sample component like uh, i am going to create like i will create a file welcome dot js sometimes in some applications you will be finding this as a jsx don't don't we, we don't need to fear for that why because jsx is nothing nothing but javascript xml and we, now we have complete knowledge i guess i have given you complete de in detail depth knowledge on jsx uh, to repeat it again this this syntax is called as jsx we use this in react to convert the html elements into react elements internally it converts into react dot create element this is the reason we have imported react there is no wonder now for us we can uh, everyone may feel that uh, we have imported react and we are not using in the any in the next lines of the react but internally we are using this so that that we need to understand more so coming to a uh, new applic a new component just uh, i wanted to create a new component i want to write that component into app component uh, wh what i need to do like uh, i'm writing a component like i will be using arrow functions of es6 this is the functional component i will write like this any of the component in react should written an html or render an html any component any react component should written or render any of the html so the in that case only if we call that html or component it will return that particular html data so now i am trying to write a sample like a dev is dev uh, let me format it in this way just i am uh, giving a flower base in order to understand exactly this is the welcome component so i wrote one component okay so now uh, i wrote one component uh, will it this works no this will not work because we just wrote a functional component but we are not importing react so then how this jsx code will be uh, compiled right we'll be getting issues so we have wrote one component and we need to import it with react then only the jsx code will be compiled so we are importing react from which which library from which package react package we're importing react from react package so now this jsx code would be understandable by babel and uh, every browser as well so we have imported react and it is going now i wanted to use in the application here i will use like this how to use an component in another component we can write like this okay so i have declared a component like here functional component to make jsx work i have imported react and if i wanted to use this welcome component i'm going to here and this is a syntax i, I should give so this component will be replaced with this div element so this happens when we write a component welcome this will be replaced by the written element of this component it will call welcome component welcome component will be called what is this welcome component is doing it's going to return back this div okay that div will be replaced in the place of here in the ninth line all this code will be replaced let's see uh, we are getting some issue here let's see and uh, find it out what it is like uh, we are getting welcome is not defined uh, in which file 
is showing in src app.js line number nine i'm getting welcome is not defined let's go there in the app, src app.js in src app.js what it is saying it's saying welcome is not defined okay welcome is not defined yeah what it means we have you we are using a component but we are not importing that component so that's the reason we are getting this issue so let's import that component welcome import welcome from where we are going to import welcome component okay as i said we no need to give dot js extension the build workflow will be taking care of that so now i could able to import this welcome component why because uh, i am using this welcome component this components need to be uh, i mean uh, this app.js needs to understand what it is so we need to import the welcome component so we are saying that welcome component has a definition and it is a component you can go and see this details in this welcome.file welcome.js file this is the fourth line it means we are importing that component from this file so even though we are getting some issue what it is it means it is asking see let's read this attempt import error welcome does not contain a default export it is important so if we see it is it is complaining us welcome is not a part of imported exported so we are importing a component which is not exported so just i wanted to make you understand we can't use a component which is exported before exporting we can't use a component so i am not exporting a component here so how can i use this component here so that's the reason it is saying that attempted import error welcome does not contain a default export so go to the welcome component and give like this export default and name of the component see now what we have done here here we have done welcome we are we have created a welcome component and exporting this that welcome component here now this export only we can import a component if it is exported only we can use a component if we have exported it in that file so now we have exported it and we are coming here we are importing that component and we are using that component so this is the right way of okay we got another another error let's see what it is expected an assignment or function call and instead son and expression in the fifth line yeah go to the fifth line yeah this is error because we need to have this open brace in the top yeah now it is gone so let's check whether we got this welcome component or not yeah we got this welcome component as well this is a welcome component we got the welcome component for example now we could able to create one component like the component name is welcome.js jsx we have created the component by using es6 arrow function syntax and also we have imported react in order to work with jsx and we have exported this component in order to use it in app.js this is the way we need to use our components so we can use multiple times like i can copy this can paste it i can paste it a couple of times so we have used welcome component a couple of times like three times i am using this welcome component so let's check it see we have three times used so this is the main purpose and usage of this component based we have declared a component once and we can use it n number of times any number of times throughout the applications so this is the main use of re uh, reusability just we have declared the component once and we are using as many times as needed in the application so that's the main usage of this component base uh, let's check um, this is a static right uh, we are going to see 
static pages like a welcome component welcome component let's make something i mean uh, content dynamic like uh, for any of the expression we need to write in the flower braces like this so if you observe here the the content is very much static this is welcome component this is, let's make this dynamic we need to make this dynamic uh like at any i'm going to write a math function so that let's check uh it, it needs to come as a dynamic way dot and dot dynamic just i wanted to make sure it should return a dynamic numbers uh, let me float this yeah if i not give this flower place a single flower place what happens let's let's check it once i think i have not saved this file uh, for any of the changes we need to save the file so that it will reflect here so see as it is what i wrote we uh, it came like that only i mean we are writing a math function here it means it's an expression it's need to be evaluated into a value so what we need to do we need to do an single flower brace so we use single flower braces to evaluate the expressions anything which we write in this single flower base it will be evaluated this is an this is like more like expression it will be evaluated into a single value that's the reason we are giving an flower base to this now check it out what happens here so we have a dynamic content same component we have used but we got dynamic content for first time we got five second time 29 third time one it means we have used the same component with the dynamic data dynamic content we have a dynamic content here so let's do a one more step more like let me pass properties to this before coming to the properties let's let's discuss one more point like if i do anything any component i wanted to declare here just wanted to uh, say one uh, important point here uh, so that we need to understand any of the component only needs to have one root component in the react.js like for example if i wanted to declare another div here this is error so why we get error see as on when i wrote div one div here and i wrote another div outside of the first div i'm getting some issues here let's check it it passing your error adjacent jsx elements must be wrapped in a closing tag it means it's asking all of the elements should be wrapped in one element so you can write here n number of elements but at the end you need to wrap it with one div element so for example if you copy this and paste inside this div part means everything is exist in one div so it it needs to have a div element on the top all the elements inside this should be wrapped with one root div element this is because as earlier we have seen a react dot element create element syntax let me show here it is holding only one div at the top so if we have multiple divs the construction of this creating element would be destroyed so here it the syntax would be like create react dot create element the parent tag the root tag after that class name of the root i mean a class name of the styles anything we give to that root will come into here and the child elements will be coming here so this is the main reason internally we write this and it will be converting like this so that's the reason for example if you are going to write another div element here we will write a div element here let's see the same error we'll be getting
the same error we will be, we'll be getting this is because we need to enclose all the uh, html tags we wrote in a single single html tag that is that is because it internally creates a react dot create element with this div element so that's the reason we are going to wrap entire our html into one div element so that's the reason we are using a div element here as well so that's the reason i'm giving a div element here so let's check yes and sometimes we feel uh, it's unnecessary to give an uh, div element uh, like uh, to say uh, let's go to the console i think this is a dummy div we are using this but there's no purpose of using this div but it occupies in the dom it occupies dom like go to the browser let's inspect these elements what are they how they look here so see we have a div element which is a dummy div so i mean dummy div in sense it it holds div but nothing is related to this div just we are wrapping our elements in this div component so our purpose of development is we need to have a div entire html will be going to one div because we are calling that div as a root div so instead uh, instead that we can use fragments react fragment so the dummy occupation of this div will not be there see now check what will happen so let me check see as we have removed div the alignment was dropped but if you observe there are no more divs are added here earlier there are three divs added each for each of the elements now no div is added this fragment will make us usage of that uh, sometimes we'll be using a div, uh, unnecessary divs to only make sure that all our elements uh, should go into one root component we'll be using divs so in that case we can avoid the div and we can use this react for fragment what this helps means it will not occupy anything in the dom element while constructing it let me repeat the same point as per the react rules we need to bind all our html elements into one root element mainly we'll be using that as a div element earlier as we have used that div element but when we use this div element it occupies in the dom like let me undo this i have used this div element and you see here it is occupied in the dom so more divs are added so when in order to avoid that we are going with react dot fragments so what does this mean this do is it will not add the div to the dom in that case it's making optimal uh, development so i have added react out fragment in this way so we can also add it from package like this uh, directly i can give a fragment here so that i can remove these dots this is also same as the earlier earlier i have referred directly react dot fragment i mean i'm taking the fragment component directly from react package and I have referred this time i'm using it from react and have writing in this way so both are the same first one and second one and mainly uh, we'll see this same it's the same output see we have no divs no divs will be added only the content will be added so the main purpose is we are avoiding the unnecessary divs to load it in the dom that's the main purpose of this react fragments so also a simple syntax we have just give open and close braces that will make the same result as react fragment so there are three ways we can use react fragment react dot fragment or we can import react import fragments or we can just give an empty divs empty open brace and close brace this also uh, makes us uh, i mean uh, it will also not add anything to the dom yeah so 
React fragments. Let me write this point. React fragment is the latest. It, it came in the latest versions of React.js. It helps or it avoids to add additional div tags into the DOM. So that, that's the main purpose of this React. Mostly we use div elements to make sure we need to have a parent component on the top of the element. So this is the reason we use div mainly. So we are avoiding this usage of div with Re React fragment. If we use React fragment, there will be no divs added further. So coming to the next three ways of using this React fragment, like directly I have used the React fragment and uh, I have imported fragment from React package and I have used a fragment and also I can use an empty tags like this. So these are the three ways we can use the React fragment. So we have covered what is semantic versioning, package JSON. So we'll end up the session for now. So let's revise what all we have discussed for today. Uh, I have started with package JSON. I've explained about the script stacks, what the differences between dependencies, dev dependencies, what's, what's all about this semantic versioning, and also explained about how it, uh, React internally works. Like this is the main root element we are going to use. And uh, in the index.js, we are pointing it to, to load our component into this div element and have created one more component and explain more about this JSX. I hope this will help us in understanding deep drive of, of this JSX. What is JSX? Why we are using the main purpose of this JSX is it will convert the HTML element tags. This HTML elements tags into React element tags. And also we have seen what the Babel role here, how it converts our code into the browser understandable code was we have seen regarding the Babel and also we have used what all the expressions, anything which we give in uh, Flower Libre base is an expression. It would be evaluated from an expression to a value, understandable value. And further we have created a small component, welcome component, and we have used multiple times welcome component with the dynamic content. So in the further classes, we'll use how to use this component dynamically. So we'll you will how to send the props. This component is a static component. We'll call this as a stateless component or a dumb component. Just it has only presentational component here. So we can use how what all the props in the next classes. We'll be making use of the props state. What are the differences between prop state and uh, further? We can uh, check in the next classes. Thank you all.